The time has finally arrived. After weeks of preparation, including making a bee farm, a slime farm, and of course a mob farm, I think we're finally in a position to build our very first tree farm, which is of course going to be for harvesting mangrove wood, because that stuff is an absolute pain. But we should be able to get ourselves some decent logs, and of course we'll probably get some roots from it as well. I've been messing around with a few things. We've looked at some other people's tutorials and things like that. We've had to adjust some stuff to actually make them work properly, but I think we're finally actually there. We just need to pick a location to build it. So there's a few things to consider while we look for somewhere to build it. The main one being the actual size of the thing. It's about 35 blocks tall and it's about sort of 25 by 25 on the sides, including the catchment chamber for all the wood we're going to be collecting. And that means it's going to be pretty big. It's going to be pretty massive. And I think if we were to build it on this island and then try and hide it, it's going to look a little bit out of place because the building to hide it is going to have to be even bigger than the tavern itself. So with that in mind, let's go do a little bit of exploring. And I think I know what I'm looking for. Ideally, somewhere where we can hide half the build underground would be ideal. So we need a big hole. So there is a hole here, but that's nowhere near big enough to actually hide much of the farm at all. And in fact, we did go exploring down there during a stream not so long ago, and we found something quite interesting. But we'll save that for later in the episode. So for now, we have other priorities. We've done way too much procrastinating about this farm as it is. But I think we're still going to need to go further afield. Because this area here, I do have plans for. So, let's see what's on the other side of the village. Maybe we can even hide it inside the mountain. That would solve all our problems with trying to hide it, I suppose. I'm actually up here just behind our village. Well, I say our village. We haven't actually done anything with that one yet. Our island is just over there. But there is quite a decent sized hole here. And I reckon... If we were to do a little bit of work, we're probably going to need to make this hole wider, about 10, 15 blocks wider, which means there's going to be a whole lot of digging. But we should be able to sink down a good portion of the farm into this area. And that means we're going to have less to hide on the surface. So with that in mind, I guess the first thing we're going to need to do is just clear the trees off the top here. We're going to measure out how much space we actually need, and then we're going to get digging. Still without a beacon. I mean, I could go out of the way to go get a beacon, but I'm too scared. I'll do that later. A good few hours later and a good few tools as well. We've had to make and combine many pickaxes to get this done, but it's finally done and it's just a massive hole. Just a really great big hole that we're going to fill with a tree farm. And I think I have pretty much everything I'm going to need in order to get this built. I've just got to work out where to start. So in order to make this farm, I have done a bunch of research. I looked at tutorials by Iceberg Lettuce and Il Mango. And I think we've finally got something that's going to work for us. But before we can get started, there's a few things that we need to note. And one is the direction that the farm actually faces. So I want to make sure that I'm growing the trees in this sort of corner here. And the trees have a strange property in that they can grow up to seven by seven wide so we need to make sure we leave plenty of space so we want to be starting the farm around about here and that should in theory mean we're gonna be okay the downside is if I do get this wrong we will have to do a little bit more digging to make space elsewhere but I think that should be about the right spot so I'm gonna get this first bit of the mechanism in and I'll show you what it is once it's done as I say if you do want a step-by-step -step tutorial then do check out iceberg lettuce the majority of this design is based off of his work I've just had to make a few adjustments but we'll get to those at the end So we're making very good progress over here. We've got the timing mechanism in, we've got all the bone mill loading system, and of course the dispensing system as well. And when we're using it, we'll actually be standing here. And then we've got this big tall column of stripped wood, and they are there to prevent the bee nests from spawning in, which is why the orientation of this farm is important. You must make sure that north is that way, or at least the logs that are gonna block beehives are on that side, because bee nests will not actually spawn on this side. And this is where we're gonna be sending things through, and of course, blowing them up. So the next thing I need to do is actually to build up the flying machine and it's very very big it's very very complicated and I'm not even going to try and explain it I'm 
I'm going to try and explain it. So I've had to build this more than once. It, it, I made a slight error in the very first thing. You may have noticed in the time lapse, I forgot to put these pistons on the side. And well, the whole thing broke. So I had to build it again. And, and, and then it broke again. And I had to rebuild it again. But the important thing is, hopefully this time I've got it right. I've checked. I've double checked. And I think everything is in the right place. But the basic concept is this massive flying machine here will slide across this way. That's then go that, that that's then going to push this chain. I'm sorry, we seem to be having some technical difficulties. That's then going to push this wood here out of the way, and then it's going to push all the trees forward by nudging these. And then this machine over here just sort of returns everything back to normal. The question is, have I actually got it right this time? So let's turn it on and see if it does its thing. Please don't break. Okay. Well, that's good. The whole machine this side came back in one piece. Now the question is, is this side here working as well? Which it looks like it may well be. So if you can see what's happening, the flying machine goes across, pushes this block here, which will actually push all the tree blocks across. And then, as I say, this one here sort of just resets it and pushes this column back once it's done. So one change I have had to make so far is on this area here. I was having a bit of trouble where the pistons at the bottom just weren't doing what they were supposed to do. It was fine in the world download, but it wouldn't actually work once it was built here in the real world. So what I've done is changed this bottom area here and just kind of switched it up a little bit. So there's actually four honey blocks at the bottom instead of two. And yeah, these pistons are a little bit higher, but it does the job. It does seem to work. And in theory, that means if we were to start planting saplings over there, we're going to start getting the mango trees coming out this way. But of course, that would not be very useful to us right now because we need to build up a blast chamber, we need a catchment pool, and we need to make sure that we can actually destroy the logs once they're made. And something else I'm going to do is put a block on top of this because that's loud and annoying. Just a cheeky little slab there should do it. Perfect. And these ones here are also making noise. Can I cover these up without causing any trouble? So if I put a slab there, is that going to break anything? Okay, I've literally just broken everything. Ah, this is not the first time this has happened, and it probably won't be the last. But I'm not entirely sure why that happened. Something to do with quasi-connectivity, maybe? I don't know. So it's the good thing about breaking and rebuilding this so many times is I now feel like I have a good understanding of flying machines. I literally built this thing four or five times now, and that doesn't even include all the messing around in creative, but hopefully I'll fix it. And uh, I think I have a better solution for making the note blocks a little bit quieter. And there we go. Perfect. So the next thing to do, I think I want to get the water catchment platform type thing in first because, well, everything else is built at height and I don't want to die. So having a water platform down here is probably going to be quite useful for us. <laughs> Our water catchment tray is now in, and I've also put up a wall here just to stop any logs from sort of flying into the mechanism over on that side there. And I've just taken a dip in the drink. That's not what I intended. So we've got the main workings of the machine, and we've got the catchment platform, but we have no way to destroy the wood currently. So the next thing to do is to get a couple of TNT droppers at the top. We're going to have one on each side dropping at different heights because this thing can get quite tall although it does appear that we're completely out of observers and there's a couple of other bits and bobs we need including the tnt itself so we're gonna head back we're gonna pick up what we need and hopefully when i bring you back in we'll have a couple of working tnt droppers a few minutes later and i think i've got the tnt thing built i've just got one thing i need to do before i turn the machine on otherwise it's all gonna blow up and that's certainly not something we want so let me go across and what i need to do is just open that gate there Perfect. Perfect. So this TNT duping machine is actually from an old Il Mango tree farm tutorial, which is one that I have built before. I know it's reliable once it's actually working. So hopefully I've done this correctly and uh, well, let's test it out, shall we? And if it is all working fine, then we're actually going to put in a second one on this side, slightly higher up, just so we can destroy all of the wood as it gets generated. So let's go switch this thing on. And in fact, in regards to the on switch, I've actually moved it now. If I just punch this, that will turn the whole machine on and hopefully 
This isn't going to blow me up. Let's find out. But it looks like it's working, and it's also punching a slight hole in the side here, but I don't see that being too much of an issue. We'll just let it run for a little bit, see how much of the glass here it actually destroys, and then we can always replace those bits with something else. So it does appear that all the missing glass is in this strip here, so we might just replace that strip with obsidian, but we'll get the other one built first. We'll run the farm for a little while, and we'll see how many holes we end up with. We might have to rethink that glass shield a little bit. The second TNT dropper is in, and as you can see, I've tested it a little bit. It does seem to work. I did actually record a whole bit for the last few minutes and, uh, well, turns out I didn't actually record it. I was just talking into a mic that wasn't recording at all. But if you have a quick look at this little replay, there we go, look, see it going. You can see that the farm is now working. However, there is one slight problem and that problem is fairly minor in the grand scale of things. It's a lack of propagules because this farm, it doesn't really collect things from the leaves. It doesn't destroy the leaves, so it doesn't produce its own propagules, at least not many. It drops them on the floor occasionally, but that's not a problem because... Well, mangroves have a special thing, don't they? Where you can actually get proper gills from the leaves themselves. So I guess we need to design ourselves a quick little farm. And we've got some space down here in which to put one. So hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. I am very excited though, because that first little run managed to get us almost a stack of mangrove logs and a, a couple of roots and a, a one proper gill. But it mainly is about the wood here. So this is good. This machine actually fit in the hole quite well as well, to be honest with you. I haven't got too much to hide and to cover, but we'll put a building on top at some point. But let's get our priorities straight first. Let's see if we can get ourselves a proper gill farm up and running. We're going to need to go grab lots of bits and stuff and things for this though so homeward bound now what do we know about propagules we know that if we have a leaf and we bone meal it we can get propagules in fact what we know is that you have to bone meal okay you have to bone meal the leaf at first and then you have to bone meal the propagule itself so i guess we're gonna need a couple of dispensers aren't we so if we were to have that as our collection system what we're going to need is a dispenser that will shoot at a leaf and another one that's going to shoot at the propagule if we have a couple for the bone meal then that way we're actually going to be getting them twice as quick i guess and how are we going to destroy the propagule i guess we're going to need to use a piston do i have any pistons i do have a piston we certainly didn't want to be using a sticky piston so let's put an observer there and a piston there so in theory this is the sort of core of the machine we've got a dispenser to shoot at the leaves and give it some bone meal and then we've got two more dispensers to actually make the proper gill big enough what we're then going to need to do of course is put this on some kind of a timing system so i guess i'm going to spend a little while messing around with redstone now let's make some space behind it so we can probably use a system like that will that actually do this one as well it does okay cool that will fire both those dispensers and then we need to fire this one here as well can we get away with just putting a redstone dust here oh look at that i'm a genius what we also need to do is make sure we can turn this on and off so maybe if we just put a sticky piston not quite there put a sticky piston there we should be able to just lift that up and down to turn the machine on and off that's simple enough and what we also need is we need to fire this piston but we need to make sure that there's enough time for the propagules to grow before the piston fires so i don't know um maybe let's make a little timer down here we're just going to be guessing on a timing for now so maybe just something as simple as that and then we're going to need a way to turn this on and off. So an observer down there with a slime block on top should do the trick. And we've got all the redstone wired up around the back, which I think should be fairly straightforward. That appears like it's going to work. Okay, it seems to be working. I think I've got my timing okay. I can probably even speed it up a little bit down here. And that seems to be doing the trick. We are collecting some mangrove propagules. We've actually got 30 already. And round the back here, we also invert the signal, which makes a little clock around the bottom here. So we've actually just got an observer down the bottom there and every time that this piston goes forwards or backwards it will kick start this clock so if we turn that off and then on again you'll see how that works and that rotates around which fires the piston so yeah it, it works there's probably much better ways of doing this but this will definitely work for us i do however need to put some glass on the front there just so the propagules don't go flying around everywhere and then of course we need to make it look good because currently it does not in fact we've got a massive area we need to make look good so for now let's just make sure this thing is going to be working and do I have any more hoppers? I do. In fact, I'm wondering if we even need the second dispenser. Let's just put some bone meal in here, turn the machine on, and see how that does. Oh, we need some bone meal in the top as well. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Okay, so we don't even need the second dispenser, which means we can get rid of that, and that's going to solve our bone meal issue because it means we can actually load up the machine now. So if we just have a chest here for loading the bone meal into the top one and a chest here for loading bone meal into the bottom one down there, in theory, we can actually just crack on like so and let's see how we go 
Brilliant. And we can actually see what it's doing now. This bit of glass actually stops us from being able to see the particles, so this is good. We just need to jam it all in and make sure that it's going to work effectively for us and make sure we don't actually lose anything. So I've just walled it in with some stone for now. Nothing too fancy, but that should at least stop things from going wrong. And, uh, well, I guess we can just stand here and wait till we get some proper gills. Actually, I should probably put a lot more bone meal in these things first. So I've put about six stacks of bones into the machine spread across those two boxes. Let's just see how much we actually get from this thing if we leave it running. And in fact, while that's running, I may as well run this machine as well and see how much wood we can actually get out of, let's say, a stack of proper gules. Let's see what we can do. We've used just over a stack of proper gules and let's see what we've got. Oh! Oh, look at that. We've got four proper gules back. But we already had pretty much that stack in there, didn't we? But we have managed to get four and a bit stacks from one stack of proper gules. But it's worth it because I never have to chop down mangrove again. Oh, that stuff is the worst. And this machine over here from six stacks of bones, we got almost four stacks of, well, three and a half stacks of mangrove proper gules. So, okay, not too bad. I'm going to stand here and use this machine a bit more because I really want lots of mangrove wood. <laughs> just used all of those proper gules and we have got look at that oh this is amazing so we've managed to get almost a chest of mangrove in fact that one's missing some so we've managed to get almost a chest of mangrove wood with what was that three and a half stacks of mangrove saplings so that is good going i am pleased with this and as you can see we do get the occasional sapling back that drops on the floor but most importantly it works oh i'm so happy so so happy so the next step is going to be to make this hole look good because currently it's an absolute mess and we also need to make sure that we're hiding up the top we need a decent way to get up and down so i'm probably going to potter around for a little while we'll see if we can get this place looking a little bit better at least more acceptable than just stone everywhere but i am well chuffed with that very, very happy. Excellent stuff. You ever do that thing where you tell yourself you're just going to place a couple of blocks and then before you know it, you've built up an entire room? Yeah, well, that happened. But I think it's looking pretty good. It's definitely looking a lot more pleasing to the eye than just a stone box that we had down here. And as you can see, I've made quite a few changes. I've swapped around the water so it goes this way now. And that actually pushes all of the mangrove wood into these boxes up here. And I've also raised up the proper gear generator. This was a few blocks lower down. But I think it's looking a lot better now. We've also got the boxes here to load in the bone mill for it. I've also added in a water bubble vator thing so we can go up and down easily to the surface. And through here, I've just made this a little bit more enclosed so that we don't have to put up with all the vines dripping on our face the entire time. I've kept the ceiling very, very basic at the moment because, well, I didn't want that to be mangrove as well. And to be honest, I don't really have much other wood or blocks or pretty much anything. If it's not mangrove or deep slate, I basically just don't have it oh apart from stone i've got lots and lots of stone and cobble as well but now when we turn this farm on the tnt drops perfectly through these holes which is marvelous so we don't have to actually see the big clunky machines up there and if we go up to the surface here you'd barely even know that there was a farm down there we've just got this little entrance bit here with lots of sticks floating about that was me throwing them away yep they'll despawn eventually and the only other giveaway is the little bit of terracotta we've got here, which is, of course, sitting directly on top of the TNT exploding machine thing. And the sun's going down, so I'm going to quickly go to bed. And I'm going to eat some food so I don't starve to death. Jeez. So with the interior of the farm looking good, the next step, of course, is to make the surface here look good and actually show that there is something here. And I think some kind of a logging camp or something would look really good up here because it is on the outskirts of this village down here and it's far enough away from our island for this to be essentially a tree felling area and what with this in here being a mangrove farm that does make perfect sense but sadly that's gonna have to wait for the next episode because we're out of time here i hope you have enjoyed it and i'll see you all on the next one bye now